Hi, this is David, and um, I wanted to do this video on something I've been thinking about, um, and that is why uh, why do people join cults, uh, and why do people join the Mormon Church and other um, kinds of um, closed knit societies? And I've come to some preliminary uh, conclusions. I've learned in life that um, you can't make permanent decisions. Uh, on anything. Uh, life changes. Life is a, a free-flowing uh, experience, an event. When you're 20 years old and you uh, promise uh, in your temple ceremonies to, and, and covenants to do certain things, when you're 60 or 70 or 80, uh, some of those things can't be done or you've changed your mind. So let me just put it this way. Um, I wasn't much of a philosophy uh, person in school. Uh, I had Truman Madsen at BYU, uh, one of the most brilliant, um, I think brilliant, uh, teachers I've ever come up uh, with. And I had him for a, um, a philosophy class. And after class, I went up to him the first couple of days and I said, you know, this is boring as hell. I said, I'd really like to do something different, but I need this credit for um, graduation. So he allowed me <coughs> to do a, a special assignment. And he told me, uh, you know, don't let anybody else know that I've let you do this because I will get fired. BYU will not allow this. So I did the report on um, out-of-body experiences, uh, also called astral projection. And I had to take it to his house to turn it in rather than class. Uh, he was a good man. And he really uh, gave me a strong foundation uh, in life. Now, <clears throat> here's what I think and, and what I observe. It could change. So if you look at this video 50 or 100 years from now, say, see, he was wrong. Well, I could be wrong. Um, I think that as uh, men and women uh, mature over life, there's some key places. Uh, one of them is certainly marriage. Another is the birth of our children. And another certainly is the death of family members. Um, and um, our own impending death, serious. Uh, I've had quad bypass surgery. It's been a year now, and um, that gave me some time and some motivation to think. And here's what we find, I think, in those spots of our life. Who are we? Why are we here? And where are we going? Well, to tell you the truth, now I, this is just David truth, okay? It's not the prophet David. It's not, you know, Joseph Smith marrying the 14-year-old David. It's just David, okay? I don't think there's answers to those questions. Now, the Mormons are going to, you know, he's the devil is in his heart and whatever. I know the church is true. Well, that's okay. If you believe that, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I don't agree with it. And now that I'm not uh, LDS after 50 years and resigning, not being excommunicated, um, I can freely say, I don't think there's answers in this life to those questions. Uh, who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? I think that every human being rapple, uh, grapples with those uh, concepts in philosophy. Uh, we see things that don't make sense. When we have a, a three-year-old and someone backs over her in the driveway uh, and kills her, there's nothing to say. There's nothing to do. Now, of course, if you're in a cult, the cult will give you tapes to play and words to say. Well, Heavenly Father wanted her uh, on the other side. She's uh, very happy and she has a mission there to perform. Well, that gives the parents and, and loved ones perhaps comfort. When you look at that with the left side of your brain, my brain now says, well, uh, if he wanted her, uh, she's only been here five years, why didn't he just keep her up there? Now, of course, the Mormons are going to say, well, she needed a body so that she could be tested and, and she didn't need to be, uh, you know, baptized and she went to heaven. That's the philosophy of the Mormon church. And again, if that brings parents and loved ones comfort, who am I to say uh, right or wrong? But for me and, and my family and my life, I don't think there's answers to those questions. I think there's many attempts to answer those questions. And I believe that man's nature is such that those who are not real confident about why they're here, where they're going, where they came from, uh, etc., are 
more susceptible. Now, I've had statistics, and I'm not saying 100%, and I'm not saying this is the answer and this is the truth. This has given me time to think. And if you're watching my tapes, maybe it, you know it'll give you time to go, hmm, I'm thinking myself. There's not answers to those three questions. And we try to answer them with religion. Uh, politics doesn't seem to answer them. Uh, and um, our friends don't seem to have any better answers than we do. So I think the people who are, are inclined and who are uh, perhaps predestined to go into cults are very strong religious uh, closed cult-like um, organizations are people that really are concerned about those philosophical um, uh, dilemmas that we all face. Now the Mormon Church um, has come up with answers to those three questions. Uh, where did I come from? The pre-existence. You were living with Jesus and God and you wanted a body so you came to earth. Well let me tell you something my friends. If I was living with God I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't go anywhere. I'd be happy right where I was. But again, if the Mormons want to believe that, that's fine. And why are we here? Well, we're to be tested. Well, there's a, a philosophical answer that no matter what happens to you, no matter what happens to you, you can turn that to say, well, that was a test. My three-year-old uh, was backed over, and the Lord wants to see how I take it. That's stupid to me. That's shit to me. Uh, that does not cut uh, any kind of weight with me in an explanation of shit happens. Okay, you may not agree, that's fine, but I'm free. I'm free at last and I'm able to speak my mind and what's in my thought. And so the Mormons say you're here to be tested. Well, no matter what happens to you down here, uh, negative, that's going to cover it. So that's kind of comforting to those people. Where am I going? Well, the Mormons say that um, there's three kingdoms of glory and three kingdoms within each of those kingdoms. So there's nine levels, I guess. And if you work really, really hard and you pay the Mormon church 10% uh, of your gross income for life and you work and work and work and work uh, and they give you way too much to do and you are feeling guilty because you can't do it all and then they hit you with be ye therefore perfect like your father in heaven is perfect and they put the guilt trip all over you for your lifetime well you want to get to that highest degree of the celestial kingdom your families can be there forever and that's a wonderful concept is it true <clears throat> I think when you uh, unravel it it's not you have children you have great-grandchildren you have you know the family goes on and on and on how can they all live together in one house you know uh, so anyway, I'm saying that the three basic questions of mankind from the beginning of time and till the end of time, I think are, you know, who are we, where did we come from, and where are we going? Well, I think that people who are vulnerable, people who have had terrible things happen, divorce, disability, sickness, um, death, unemployment, those people are very um, vulnerable and they're very exploitable. And when a missionary comes in with uh, ideas of, wow, you're just being tested, well, you feel a little better. Where did you come from? You lived with God and you could be a God yourself. Gee, that's kind of a positive idea, even though, you know, my child was run over. And the other one is you're going to be in heaven and you're going to see your child again and you'll both be families forever uh, in the celestial kingdom. Good Lord, there's the answers. There's the answers to life. Well, Mormons believe that. They are uh, susceptible to those ideas. And that just kind of puts the problems away. They're on the shelf. You can say, I, don't, I know where I came from, why I'm here and where I'm going. I'm being tested and that's just the way God is. And the more he tests me, the better it is for me. Well, think about that. If you've got a left side of the brain in any in common sense, um, are those ansibles plausible? I'm never going to say never, but I never think so. <laughs> so why do people join the Mormon church especially? They see the young, happy couples and the beautiful clothing and the conservatism and the smile and smile and the love uh, bombing. 
many people are subjected to, uh, to that and enjoy it. Many people need that friendship and that fellowship and uh, a place to go and a huge family to belong to and security that they'll help you if you're sick or they may bring over a casserole if your baby dies. Um, and they will constantly inundate you. Well, God wanted her in a better place. And somehow uh, that makes you feel better. Well, I think those of us that leave the church, uh, I went uh, from the Mormon church into uh, Christianity, just believing in the uh, principles and uh, the Son of God concept and resurrection. It didn't take me too long, five or six months to go from there to atheism. Uh, virgin births uh, don't hit it with me. Every time I've seen a birth, there's a penis. And it's an earthly penis. It's not a um, uh, Holy Ghost penis. Uh, I don't know what a Holy Ghost penis looks like. And you know what? You don't either. So it didn't take me long from uh, a man walking on water uh, and uh, golden plates that disappeared to go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what is going on here? Now, one thing that happens, and believe me, I'm not trying to pull anyone towards atheism. I'm not trying to get anyone out of the Mormon church. That is your own decision. I'm simply saying what did it for me. Once I became an atheist, then all of my religious friends warned me. I had one friend uh, that warned me who was uh, FLDS and polygamist, and he said, you don't know what you're doing to your kids. You don't know what responsibility you have to raise them in the church as a righteous priesthood holder. And so they tried to pull the guilt stuff on me as an atheist. And I said, you know what? I don't give a rat's ass. I don't give a shit. Simple as that. I want to be a good father. I want to be uh, raising my kids properly, treating them properly. And um, <clears throat> you can't scare me anymore. What a relief. I've lived in fear and, and antidepressant drugs my whole life. Since I left the church, I'm not on any antidepressants. I'm not on any uppers. I'm on, you know, psychotropic meds for bipolar and diabetes, insulin. But <clears throat> the fear and the trepidation and the guilt has left me. So I don't have to jam that volume in my mouth anymore uh, and uh, try to feel like a human being. So when I went to being an atheist, um, I had to process my whole life and my future all over again. And as an atheist, um, if there's a Jesus, uh, I don't want to live with him. I don't want to live with him. I've seen how he's tested his children, and uh, I find that more than distasteful. I'm not interested in living with any supreme being <coughs> that uh, causes the starvation and test his uh, babies with disease, and uh, I'm not interested. So if I'm wrong as an atheist and Jesus appears at, at my death and tries to hug me, I'll say, you know what? I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Uh, you do what you want with your Mormons or do what you want with your Catholics, that's fine. But I don't believe in you. I don't want to believe in you. And uh, I think uh, you need some parenting classes and you owe a lot of child support and I put you up for uh, domestic and uh, child abuse. So I've made that decision. And uh, a lot of people, oh, you know, he sold his soul to the devil. Well, I don't think the devil's going to be there either. I'm not sure there was a Jesus. Maybe there was. And maybe he was a great teacher. And, and now let me back up just a moment, okay? The things that are attributed to Jesus are also attributed uh, in the Quran and uh, in Buddhism and um, in Hinduism. Uh, the, the, com the comments of uh, the Ten Commandments. The concept of the Ten Commandments is common and, and was far uh, documented before the man Jesus ever showed up. And um, I do believe in those principles. I do believe in, in being true to your wife and I believe in, uh, in honoring your parents and I do believe in not lying and cheating and screwing someone other than your wife. I believe in that, but I don't need to take the Jesus with it. I don't need to. They're good concepts. So I try to live my life that way and I raise my children that way and again uh, you know uh, virgin births and men walking on waters and then when they came to get him out of the tomb he was gone you know kind of like the gold plates and I'm going well there's too many there's too many coincidences here so I'm happy being an atheist I don't care when I die when I die I don't care where I'm going I am going to be the best person that I can be here I'm going to do videos that maybe they help people maybe they don't but I think it's good for me.
whether it's good for you or not, turn them off. Turn them off. I don't care. I don't really care. What I care about is being a good person and living the, the uh, well, I don't want to say the laws because that's triggering my uh, anti, or not, not anti-Mormon, my uh, Mormon background. Um, I want to live the precepts and concepts of uh, good religions, but I don't need to work. I don't need uh, Jesus points. My, my slate is zero. I have no Jesus points. And if the way I live of never being arrested, not taking drugs, raising 14 children, working two jobs, uh, being true to my wife and a good community, a citizen, if that's not good enough for a God, I don't care. It's good enough for me. As long as I'm around people that are like me, I'm going to be a happy camper. I'm going to be a happy camper. And I remember uh, when I started leaving the, the Mormon church, when I was a temple uh, bail worker in Los Angeles, I sat around the back room with all the old boys that were temple veil workers and they were long experienced in the church and I listened to their conversations and I looked at them and watched. They weren't happy men and the things that they talked about were only church things. They haven't really lived life. And I said to myself at that particular time and then continued on out of the church with resignation, I don't want to live with these people. I don't even want to be here in the temple with these people. They're boring. They have no sense of humor. They don't know much about life, and all they do is sit like uh, robot dolls and, and regurgitate information that, number one, is probably not true, but number two is stuff that they've heard. They don't have an original thought in their head. So let me uh, summarize by saying that I think where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going, there's no answers to that. And if you're scared, good grief. Go be a Catholic, go be a Mormon, go be a Seventh-day Adventist, a Jehovah's Witness, and they're going to tell you, and you can feel good. What if they're lying? <laughs> Are you going to have a big surprise at death? I'm not. I'm open. There's no surprises for me at death. If Jesus shows up, and it was all true, I'm going to go, whoa, whoa, send me somewhere else. I'm not interested in the way you father children. I'm not interested in the way you disappear. You don't talk to people. You don't listen to your children. When they pray to you and they beg for things, uh, you're a silent God. Go do that with somebody else. Send me over with people that are like me. I'll be very happy. If I die and I go, Poof, and I'm gone and there is no existence, how am I going to be upset about that? I'm not even there to be upset about it. If I die and Satan is there with a big pitchfork and he says, uh, you burn forever. And I'll just say, well, can I start a fire extinguisher company? I'm kind of an entrepreneur. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to have families forever. I don't want to be responsible. I've had 14 kids. I don't want 14 billion kids. And I don't want, uh, you know, 90 million wives. I'm not interested. I'm not that desperate for sex. I'm just not. And I want one wife who's my companion and my friend. And if she's there with me after this life, fine. If she's not, that's going to be fine too. I'm not going to run and run and run until I fall in the ground face down in Mormonism, feel guilty and hate myself and hate uh, the people around me, hate the world, and have on a soldier's uh, hat and um, guns on me and fight, 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 fight. Fight for what? When does a Mormon enjoy life? The truth is, they don't. No loud laughter, no light-mindedness. They're real good at that. So cults and closed communities will tell you the answers uh, to those three uh, questions that all mankind wants to know. If you believe it and it makes you feel good, geez, stay with it. I didn't. I didn't believe it and I don't stay with it and whatever happens, happens. I can't control it. All I can do is control who I am today, how I act towards other people today. If that ain't good enough for all the uh, Muslim and Mormon and, and Christian gods, I don't belong there. I don't want to be there. Thanks.